Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as was the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, let's just dive on in and let's start off with this tweet here from Finance Law over on Twitter. And we do see the Fed pulled another $20 billion worth of emergency OCE liquidity away from the banks this week. That is greater than $70 billion in the last three weeks. In 2020, they froze credit markets by pulling over $100 billion away from the banks over a four-week time frame, right? Like, as we really kind of look at what is going on here, right? One thing that I've said is that we are seeing them accelerate this, this major transition. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's 2008 repeating over, right? A lot of people think that's, oh, it's the Great Depression repeating over. No, we are in unprecedented times. In times where we are seeing a major reset behind all of the noise, all of the fear, the distractions. We do see they're purposely causing the crash, just like they did in 2020 and 2008. And again, here you guys have from July 18th. This is when we start to really kind of see the Fed starting to do this. Now, as we really kind of look at a few things here, one thing that I've made clear is that this transition into the digital age, this new financial system, it is not going to be an easy battle and it's not going to be as simple as one, two, three. No, we are going to see behind the scenes an orchestrated attack on our traditional system. We need the traditional system to collapse in order for the new system to rise from the ashes. I think fiat currencies and the overall fiat system, we have already seen the cracks in it, right? I'm pretty sure at this current moment in time, how many people actually believe that the fractional reserve banking system is not a complete Ponzi scheme. Um, we know that money is fake. We know that everything is made up and we know that the system right now is extremely, extremely broken. Beyond that, it's unsustainable. And outside of all of this, we are seeing CBDCs becoming a major talking subject because, you know, for the longest time, going all the way back to even like 2020, for an example, like 2020 was a great time uh, to really kind of be looking at this narrative because that was the time where we started to see the accelerator, right? The pandemic, the accelerator of all accelerators. What we've seen at that time was major, major lockdowns. We've seen major shutdowns of even physical cash usage, right? Because nobody was going out of their houses. Nobody was going out and, you know, shopping and doing things like that. And what we've seen was a decline in cash usage. And the World Economic Forum seen this they knew this and they ran with it and that's where we really kind of started to see cbdc's becoming a much larger talking subject they were a talking subject before 2020 but that was the time where we seen the major accelerator and we even see here like bank of canada have released a new cbdc study delving into the challenges related to financial inclusivity highlighting obstacles prevalent among rural residents indigenous groups, low-income households, and individuals with disabilities. Very interesting. And this is where they are talking about the decline of cash, CBDC's potential role in modern Canadian banking. Outside of this, we already know that CBDCs have been be, you know, becoming a big deal um, in just the last couple of years. And so far in 2023, which we have here, there's been over seven major announcements. And I would argue that there's been a lot more, right? Like, I remember specifically earlier this year talking about this as well, uh, where we've seen about roughly three pages of updates in the year 2023 already. But we also made sure to focus on 2022. And as you guys do see, here we have three on this page. Yeah, look at all of the 2022 uh, timeframe updates that we've seen around CBDCs. If you weren't here during 2022, then you missed a lot of this. You had the ECB, you had the Fed. I mean, so many major central banks were moving extremely fast on CBDCs. 
And now we already know that the BIS is continuing their work on this. We know nearly every single major central bank around the world, over 93% of them are already moving in on major adoption of a CBDC-like system, working on it, having a proof of concept, piloting, and eventually launching. We also know just recently, Ripple has become a spotlighted player around this. And this is something that I look at because I tell you guys, like this is inevitable. This is moving so damn fast, there is no slowing this down. We see all these congressional members saying, hey, you know, we need to ban CBDCs and all this talk and blah, blah, blah. But I want you guys to understand, like, this is all one big show. This idea that we could stop CBDCs. Let me ask you this. If you honestly think that we could stop CBDCs, why haven't we stopped the demise of the dollar in the last multiple decades? Because we already know that the Federal Reserve was a major accelerator for the demise of the dollar's value. Yet we never stopped that. Why didn't we stop all of the printing in the last couple decades? Because I'm telling you right now, you can't stop what's coming. You can't stop what's already in place. These central banks are the ones pulling the strings. All this talk about banning CBDCs and getting rid of CBDCs, it's nonsense and it's a waste of time. And the reason why I say that isn't because, hey, I welcome a CBDC with open arms. No, I think that there's a lot of problems with this. In fact, I would love to have central banks completely shut out of this new financial system. But the problem is, is that that's not how things are going to work. But also for those that are out there saying like, oh, CBDCs are going to be the end all be all. Um, it's going to, you know, absolutely kill privacy and this and that. I want you guys to understand that, you know, your bank account right now has zero privacy tied to it. Um, they could subpoena banks. They could look into your transactions. They could find all of that. They can control your bank account as well, which we know is prevalent right now around Chase UK, for an example, with crypto. Um, and a lot of people think that, oh, well, I could just use the, the fiat dollar, right? Paper currency. I want you guys to understand that using the dollar outside of using your bank account, a debit card, all that, they could still track that currency. That's right. So for those that are out there saying like, oh, like they can't track me if I'm using paper currency, they can, they can. And again, the reason why I look at Ripple uh, being tied to CBDCs is because I also look at ISO 20022. And for those out there that are wondering, why are you looking at ISO 20022? Because this is the fundamental piece to this new system. This is the standard that this new system is built upon. Now, of course, a lot of these coins that are ISO 20022 compliant doesn't necessarily mean that the token itself is actually compliant to this. But it does mean that the token can be utilized through the company. For example, like in Ripple's case, Ripple is the one that is ISO 2022 compliant. XRP can be tapped in through Ripple's services, which is huge. And the same goes for a lot of these uh, major coins that are mentioned here. You have XRP, you have Q&T, you have XLM, you have HBAR, uh, MIOTA, aka IOTA, XDC, ALGO, ADA, um, XVG, which I've actually never looked into XVG, if I'm completely honest with you guys. Um, but it's definitely interesting, right? And I think that we need to be looking at a lot of these currencies. Uh, most of these you probably already know about. If you have been a utility maxi for the last couple of years, then you're probably already invested in a lot of these coins. Um, and I continue to look at these, especially as we are seeing the horizon truly becoming a reality here. And again, I keep telling you guys to focus on what the elites are doing because they are the ones that are, have accelerated this push for this new system um, ever since going all the way back to 2020. For an example, you guys have January of 2020. Notes from the World Economic Forum. Cash is dead. Long live digital cash. And again, this was January of 2020. And this is where they started talking about how we need digital currencies, how we are really kind of phasing out physical cash and how it's done. And we're pushing forward on with this new transformation of digital currencies and you know central bank digital currencies and things like that. Like this was the overall focus point back in 2020, even before the pandemic, mind you. And then guess what? We've seen the pandemic, we've seen the lockdowns, and then we've seen cash usage decline massively at an alarming rate. And that was the perfect scenario for them to take that and run with it. And now, well, we see CBDCs popping up everywhere. 
By the way, here you guys have October 13th of last year, one year ago. This is how many Americans never used cash. And this is from the World Economic Forum talking about financial and monetary systems and the future of monetary systems on how they are digital. We are ushering into this cashless, in quotation marks, uh, society. Now, mind you, right? Do I like the idea of this cashless society? No, I don't. But this is what they are pushing for. And remember, like the World Economic Forum, I see so many people having this mis misconception around who the World Economic Forum is. They're like, oh, well, why don't we just, you know, ignore what they want and shut them down and this, that. Like, I don't think you guys realize that the World Economic Forum has planted their seed around the whole world and have ties to every single major leader. Every single global leader is tied back to the World Economic Forum. Every global company tied back to them. I mean, it's ridiculous. But again, I keep telling you guys to focus on ISO 2022 because this is becoming the reality. Shout out to ISO 2022. Let's do it. Actually, head of the United States Federal Credit Unions, the answer to the question of using digital assets right now is a resounding yes. Banks in America are able to use crypto right now. Proof waiting until November. Check this out. That because I want there to be a seamless experience. I think one of the questions you're asking about what some of the questions are, many of the right. credit unions still want to know, do they have our imprimatur at NCUA to embrace fintech technology? Do they have our imprimatur to embrace blockchain, distributed ledger technology, and even engaging in digital assets? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. They have our imprimatur. We've not had to give a rulemaking because our statutes, our legislation and regulations, they current, currently now allow them to engage in those activities. But as they would with any activity, do it pretty Prudently and pragmatically, are you going through the appropriate due diligence? We as an agency, we were one of the one of the few agencies that really did tell our regulated entities that you are in, you are more than welcome when it came to digital assets and blockchain. We gave them supervisory guidance, telling them look at it as they, as they would with any third party. Me? So we're looking at are you doing the appropriate vetting, the vendor due diligence? Are you looking at a lot of the other things that you would do if you were really embarking upon any other relationship? And I know our peer regulators have taken a different stance where they're saying, well, we're not going to tell you, you can do you need to ask us, let, for ask us for permission <laughs> right. and we won't and we will give you a letter saying we're not denying it mm -hmm. but that type of regulatory uncertainty and regulatory um vacuum is what we're trying to prevent at the agency so i think many of our regulated entities will say that we've been very forthright been very forward and i'm very proud that all three board members are so in unison and wanted to embrace the technology i mean i really had really great joy when I was able to get all of their support in creating the new office and moving forward with some of the other ideas with the, the new FinTech director position. So I think the one thing that I hope comes loudly and clearly from our conversation today is that we do not want to stand in your way, provided you're going through the appropriate uh, due diligence as you would with any third party vendor, as you would engage with any partnership. I think you need to measure the complexity, measure the risk as you would with any mm -hmm. activity. So there you guys have it. They want to embrace the technology. Like this is the time to be looking into the space right now and focused heavily on the fundamentals because you know those that are actually changing the way that money is moving, those that are actually embracing the efficiencies of this technology as well are going to ultimately become the leaders around this new frontier of the financial world. And Again, I keep telling you guys that it really is starting in 2023. Like this is the rapid transition. And remember, like this is not supposed to be catering to the idea of price action. Like we're not talking about price action here. We're talking about a transition period where digital currencies and these digital systems are going to roll the world. That's a big deal. It's going to start small at first, but this transition is going to be a couple years out, but it's already beginning. And now we are seeing the rapid transition happening this year. And we are already starting to see the big moves being made. We see Swift document confirms that since 2019, it has been the plan to coordinate a rapid transition in quarter four of 2023 to ISO 2022. And here you guys have it from September 2019, ISO 2022, better data means better payments. Why correspondent banking needs ISO 2022 now? And over here, you guys have, let me open this up in a new tab real quick. Let me zoom in. The SWIFT community has agreed to provide structured data in payments initiated in ISO 2022, and there is a clear intention at industry level to coordinate a rapid transition to mandatory structure in quarter four of 2023. This is 
what you need to be looking at. And we already know that Swift is heavily tapping in to blockchain and DLT technology. They are already prepared here. Swift, the DTCC, ISDA, BIS, IMF, World Bank, all of these massive global elite organizations and networks are already planning their move on crypto, blockchain, DLT, whatever you want to call it. They're already here. They're already starting. It's becoming a big deal. We just seen FedNow launch back in the summertime. Okay, from FedNow, outside of that, we've seen huge news this entire year regarding digital assets, digital currencies, adoption, tapping into the efficiencies behind it and embracing the technology stack. Do you honestly think, do you honestly think that this is all coincidental? No, this is by plan. This is their plan this entire time. It has always been their plan. Everything is aligning to it. And they are causing this. But a lot of people are caught up in the idea that, oh, it's just going to be another 2008. Oh, it's just going to be another Great Depression. It's just going to be another this, that, whatever. What we are seeing is the demise of the traditional world of finance. What they need is something to accelerate it. They need something to be, they need to, create the problem they already have the solution they're just creating the problem we're seeing liquidity constricting we're starting to see you know banks collapsing the world of finance seems as though everything is falling uh what are we going to do everyone panic everyone you know be concerned but guess what if you have been researching and understanding things that are happening this is all in line with this new financial system and it's happening. It's becoming a reality. You need to be paying attention to this. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.